purchases. So this effectively again makes the business expensive. So this is a disincentive to the uh, individuals and AOPs to convert themselves into into companies. So we feel that at least the small company uh, companies exemption as a prescribed person for withholding tax should be bought at par with the AOP which is now at uh, any AOP who is at 50 million is now required to withhold tax. So at least the small companies should be allowed to that extent at least to uh, not to withhold tax. They should be allowed not to withhold tax if they if the turnover is below 50 million. Implied whitening scheme, the institute has always been uh, projecting this that why would somebody pay tax at 20 or 25 percent if whenever he needs a capital he can easy, easily bring into the country by hardly paying about 2 percent. So section 1114 is in our view an implied whitening scheme available to the uh, business community in our country. Whenever they need capital they can have a foreign exchange remittance and practically you all know that the cost of, of rotating your money around uh, out of the country is hardly 2 percent. So in the presence of this whitening scheme, why would somebody really, you know, what was the incentive to pay more and more tax? And then coupled with this, we have got tax amnesty schemes every three or four years coming in. So this is, to me, this is a disadvantage really to the taxpayer who's, who's really paying tax. It, 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 it looks like we are making fool of them, say, of those people who are, you know, really diligently paying their taxes. So the institute is of the view that Section 114 should be removed immediately. We don't need that at all because let us look at the FDI flow in. Most of the foreign investment or, or you can say foreign remittance that is coming in is coming from our hard workers who are working abroad. The chunk is coming from their FDI in any way is not coming. So they, are con they, they would not get disincentivized because of this because it's, it's the hard-end money they're going to bring in through banking channels. And they, have, they don't have to face questions. So this is not an incentive for them. So then why is this and for whom is this here? That's a question mark. And then we are saying that the amnesty schemes should no more be introduced. It, we have had enough of them and people have, uh, we have not been able to, you know, really still thresh on to the, those, really those people who, you know, really should be considering this amnesty because the 2% way is always open to them. So why, why should they go for the amnesty? What's the incentive? Export of services provided by residents. The demand here is that export, if, 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 if the goods are exported from Pakistan, they are taxed at a, a nominal rate of 1%. And in the, in the near, uh, in the recent past, the service sector has really grown. It has really grown, grown big and, and the focus of the service sector is also export of services. Presently, uh, IT related services are totally exempt from tax, whereas any technical services that are rendered outside Pakistan by a Pakistani and the proceeds are brought into Pakistan, they are taxed at 1%. The, uh, the institute is of the view that to promote and encourage export of services, taxation of uh, rendering of services to foreign entities from Pakistan may be brought at par with uh, export of goods that is taxed at 1%. This will definitely be a good incentive for the service sector to grow further and look at prospects of uh, getting more work from abroad. Payment to non-resident, this is a, uh, all the corporate sector companies one way or the other have, do face this problem. There are different rates for, uh, for withholding on payment to non-residents ranging from 6% to somewhere around 15 percent for royalty technical services and there is a special rate for uh, insurance and other sectors. Then there is a rate for all other payments that do not fit into the specific uh, payments that have been mentioned there. They all fall into the 30 percent. If you analyze this 30 percent rate on the gross, you are effectively what you are saying is that you are looking at a margin of around 80 to 120 percent, which can never be the case. So we are when we, when we practically see this, either there is a refund situation for the non-resident, which is not acceptable to him, or what happens ultimately is that the cost ultimately goes to the, to the local person who is acquiring this service. They have to bear this cost and it again increases the cost of doing business. So we are saying this 30% rate is too high. 
this may have been justified when the tax rates were as high as 55% and 60%, but now with the corporate tax rate at 35%, this 30% withholding is too high, it should be brought down to 20%, then I think it, it should be somewhat realistic uh, to withhold a tax at 20. This is a, a Pandora box which has been going on for a number of years, favorite subject of uh, Shepard Saab sitting here. And we all debated this thoroughly in our, in our committee meetings and we feel that uh, the change brought about by the Finance Amendment Ordinance 2009 has uh, thrown out the entire concept of audit, the, the methodology of audit I would say, not the audit but the methodology of audit was brought in when the self-assessment scheme was introduced. There was a methodology that there should be a proper selection, who will select the case, the commissioner was empowered. Now, the law as it looks is that they can call for the record and then there is a debate that whether the record will be called first or the case will be selected first. In our view, in view of the institute, we are suggesting is that rules for selection of cases may be, may be drafted and they should be put in the income tax rules. No need to put the rules of selection in the main law because you can't uh, change the main law again and again every time and the FBR has the power to amend the rules so whenever they feel adequate or necessary they can change the rules and then the law itself should be suitably, suitably uh, amended to require selection of case of audit before calling the taxpayer to provide books and record, uh, and record for audit because we feel calling the books before the selection will just generate uh, corruption in, 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 in the institution that we are here in Pakistan at the moment and, and we are uh, uh, listening to a lot of complaints on the practical side. So we, it's a strong demand that the selection criteria which was there in section 177 should be restored. We have no hesitation to give powers of selection to the commissioner but the case should be identified first that yes the audit has to be done because this is a source of corruption because genuine cases can go away if you call for the record first and allow the taxpayer to get in contact with the officers. So let, let, let the selection be first and then you can do the audit the way you want. And secondly, the board should also have the powers to select a person or a classes of person uh, from time to time. This is a suggestion uh, from the institute to attract more and more uh, foreign investment in our money markets because what we observed when uh, what was pointed out that the rate of interest uh, in our money markets especially in the government security securities and bonds and uh, was is quite high as compared to European and the uh, United States markets. So we, we are saying that uh, uh, a lot of uh, inflow can happen here. But uh, unfortunately, uh, we have reduced the withholding rate to 10% on interest of non-residents uh, as far as they are covered by treaties. But no, no, I think now the treaty condition is also not there. It's for everybody. It's 10% uniform. But it's not a final tax rate because the reduction has been given in the, in the lower tax rate part two of the second schedule. What we are suggesting is that this 10% tax should be uh, finalized and it should be treated as full we have heard that the concept of common uh, tax identification number, I think it has somehow been dropped out or is it still under consideration, but we still feel that should be, there should be one unified identification number for all sort of registrations and now with the number should be you know, on the Is working. I was near. And and of course, sizable expenses. Jahan pe hote hain, uh, marriage expenses hote hain, jewelry. Yahan pe aap tap kar sakte hain. You can. You, we can devise laws where the uh, where the seller should be required to to ask for the national tax number. This is one way of broadening the tax base and you know collecting data. Who's spending what? This is, this is one of the ideas that the uh, institute is floating. 
Then there was, there's a concept of tax credit that has been introduced very recently for people who are registered in sales tax, but this is confined to manufacturers only who make 90% of their